Prayer family, I'm Liz, part of the God Minute team. And as you know, Father Ron has asked me to share in the leading of our daily prayer together, along with him, Father Michael, and Lauren. And I have to say I'm humbled to do so, and I only hope I can measure up. I pray for your support and for your acceptance. What an honor this is. But enough about me. This is all about God, to whom we now turn in prayer and gratitude. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the God Minute. Let us begin as we do all things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips and And my my mouth mouth shall shall declare declare your praise. Cradled and Embraced Based on Psalm 31 God is present to those who are awed by the sacred and to those who believe in and witness his love. This love will carry your soul into life and beauty. This love will feed you in famine, inspire you in drought, and sustain you in hardship. Our souls crave to be touched and held by God. We rejoice because we know God's love, and we trust in His divine plan. O God, source of all creation, let us know live, and share your love. Help us let go and surrender to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Jesus said to his disciples, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's gospel is one of my personal favorites. It's the Sacred Heart Gospel. It's the gospel given for that solemnity. And it's also the gospel that's given to us today as the church celebrates the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi, not only the patron of my community, but also a beloved saint in our church's tradition, is often known for his love for animals and care of creation. And while this is an element of who St. Francis of Assisi is, that only accounts for a fraction of his life. After all, St. Francis was called the incarnation of the incarnation of Christ. I suspect that's why today's gospel was chosen for his feast day. This gospel that speaks so much of Jesus' heart and what it's like. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine, we often pray. I'm sure that Francis prayed those or similar words throughout the course of his life. We know that he is the first person in history that received the wounds of Jesus, the stigmata. And he received that as he prayed before the image of Christ crucified and asked for the grace to be able to know the kind of love in his own heart that Jesus felt as he was laying down his life and giving up his spirit for us on the cross. Surely the gentleness and humility and poverty that St. Francis lived was a result of his close union with the heart of Jesus, of his willingness to take that yoke upon him. The yoke of Jesus, which doesn't restrain and hold us back from who we want to be or who we think we are, but rather the yoke of Jesus, which harnesses all of our natural human powers and makes them work for good, for our good and the good of those around us. 
While it might look like a restraint, the yoke of Jesus actually brings us great freedom. The freedom that he offers is far greater than the freedom that we could ever gain for ourselves, no matter how we go about living our lives. As we are yoked to Jesus, we learn how to go at his pace. We learn how to surrender all of our gifts and our talents and our strengths to Jesus in his strength. And we even learn how to surrender our weaknesses and allow our poverty and our weakness to be transformed by the presence of Jesus. This is a mystery that is so alive in the life of St. Francis of Assisi. At the very heart of his conversion was embracing a leper, something that he was completely repulsed by, but had the grace to do for love of Jesus. And in that moment, he experienced great transformation. His love for worldly things was completely transformed for a love of poverty. In one of my favorite biographies of St. Francis by G.K. Chesterton, he says that Francis devoured fasting as a man devours food, and he plunged after poverty as men have dug madly for gold. These paradoxes, along with the paradox of a yoke that brings freedom and the savior of the world whose heart is meek and gentle, are worth receiving and living more deeply in our own lives. By allowing ourselves to be yoked to Jesus and giving ourselves over to be transformed by his love, we will truly know a rest that no toil can bring about, but only surrender to the love which is freely given and which has no end. Together, prayer family, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this time together. Time to connect with you, Father. Time to reflect. Time to breathe in the wonder of your love and the excitement of journeying with you. Come watch over all of us as we continue to follow you. In trust, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for praying with us today. And let's wish all of our Franciscan brothers and sisters a happy feast day, and especially our very own God Minute family member, Sister Carolyn, on this most blessed day. May God's blessing go with you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, stay blessed.